Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 2 of our fire team series episode uh, 6. In the previous episode we worked on our various uh, mode selection and map selection tools inside our lobby menu and in this episode we're going to set up a button that will take us to the chosen map and mode of our from our lobby. So let's get started. Okay, so we've now got our map and mode selector. We now we want it to load up the correct map and mode for our game. So in our lobby uh, screen here, we've got lobby play screen. We're gonna have some buttons at the bottom here to tell it to launch the game. So let's add a button to this. Now I'm gonna make the design a simple button for this. I'm gonna go and create a common button element. Go into user interface, widget blueprints, and we'll do common button and open this up and in here we can get rid of the canvas panel and just design what our button is going to look like essentially so we're going to go and edit this and put in a button and inside that button is going to be a simple size box so it limits the size of the button and I'm going to set that to have a width uh, a fix on it. So let's go to the size box width and do 400. Okay, and if we change that to from fill screen to desired on screen, you can sort of see the final shape coming through just fine. And inside that button here, we're going to have some text. There we are. And let's just put that into the center of our screen here. Our center aligning it okay so the button we're going to change the design of this so when it's normal it's not going to have any uh visible appearance to it so go to button go to the style go to normal and we're going to change that to have draw as none so it sort of actually just see through by default but if we hover over it we want it to change its uh, style over to a different um different texture okay so we're gonna make our own texture for this we're gonna go to image and create a new material so ask us where do we want it i'm just gonna put it in my ui folder here and we're gonna do m for material and do uh, button common button we'll call it actually common button and go click on change material domain and open it up Okay, so now we've got this material in here, we're going to use a very simple gradient to handle this. So I'm going to go into make a sphere mask. And the sphere mask is going to create a circle for us. And the way this works is that A and B are going to be used to work out the coordinates of this. So A is going to be sort of the coordinate space it's going to be in. And we're going to take to use the texture coordinate space for the A. The B is going to be the origin point in this space. So if I said in here to put in a 0 0.5 by 0 0.5, you'll put it in the center of the whole entire screen. Now at the moment it's still very large. It's basically still using the radius default value of 256, even though our texture coordinate is being used for A. The texture coordinate here for UV is going to be 0 to 1. So what we need to do is change the radius here to be um, 0 0.5. And that will change it to be a circle that covers the whole entire thing here. And also I want to change its hardness. So let's change the hardness down to zero. We get a nice blurred edge going on here. Okay. Right. With that in done, we're going to then multi uh, lerp that sorry, between two values. So we're going to do lerp and do linear interpolate. That's going to be our alpha. And we're going to put that into final color. Now we're going to use this to give us two colors. So we're going to put in a, a sort of um, orangey color. Go maybe for a more yellowy. Change the um, we'll change the color to be a lot brighter. Like so. And then we're going to put in another color for the B value. And that's going to be our commonly used orange across our map. Okay, and there is our design. 
And obviously you can tweak this as much as you like. You can tweak the settings for our sphere mask, whatever you want. Um, but that'll do. Okay, we'll keep it simple. So with that done, we're going to go over to our common button and we should now see that material appearing here. So we're going to change that now also to be the hovered and the pressed appearance for this. Um, so, oh, I just realized I put that normal. Uh, let's copy that and paste that into hovered. Try again. There we go. And do it pressed. And clear the normal. We don't want nothing in normal. So that would be draw as none. That would be just set to none. Okay, so hover and press are set to that just fine. Hit compile, and the name of this button is going to change as well. So this text block you can see here, that's going to be variable. And that's going to be called button display. Uh, no, let's call it button text. And we go to the graph, and you make a new variable for this one, and it'll be text to display. That'd be a text value. You want know, that editable and exposed on spawn as well, so we can easily change it as we can add uh, it to the screen. So on the pre-construct, we're going to take the text to the display, and we're going to add it to our button text widget. So take that out, do set text, and put that in. So. Okay, so there is our button text here. I'm putting default value here for the text to display. Default and all that. And there we have default appearing just fine. Um, and you might want to add some padding and things like that to it. Um, we can add a little bit of padding to this. We have a size box. So we'll add some padding 10. Uh, not sorry, not there, sorry. Um, on the button text 10 on here. I'll just pad it out a little bit. Okay, so let's add this button now to our screen. So I'm going to go to my lobby play screen and we're going to search for the common button that we've made. And that's going to go into the bottom of our thing here. And this common default button here is going to be a stat at the bottom. And I'm going to change the spacer here to be a lot smaller. So let's change that to, like, say, 10 and auto. Okay. And so this button will then launch the game. So I'm going to change over your text to display what the text is going to do, say here, launch game. And hit compile and save. So let's take a look at that in the game here. So I go host match and I can go and hover over launch game and it will change its design for me. I can change what map I'm looking at. I've got to change what mode we're using too. So all that's left now is to program the launch game button to actually launch us into the correct map and mode. Okay, so on our play screen, we're gonna set up the clicked event for our button here. So we wanna set up the click event on it. So we go to common button, go to button and scroll down and add on clicked. And on here, we're gonna make an event dispatcher to handle this. So event dispatcher and we'll do clicked. Uh, we do on clicked. You know, just drag that out and do all. So then I'm back on my map selector, or not map selector, the play screen here. I can click on this button here and I should see at the bottom here on clicked. And click on here and it'll make an event for me. So this event here is going to do a load to the correct map we've chosen. So to do that, you do an execute console command. Ooh, execute console command. Um, so we need to play a controller in here. That's pretty simple. Get player controller. And the command though is going to be comprised of two things, the map and the mode. So take the command out and do append. And this is how you mix two strings together. And the string first string is going to be the map. So we're going to do server travel. I'll tell everyone that they're going to be traveling along this server. Space. And then B is going to be our map name. And that's going to come from our map selector. So let's drag out map selector. And from there, I can get the chosen map I've got. So let's go back to the lobby map selector. And here it is. I've got map path here. I'm going to store this as the current map path. So promote it to variable. Call that current map path. And just chuck that in at the end. Okay. 
So now if I go back to our lobby play screen, I can get from here map path and get map, map path. That going to be to do different game modes. You can add another pin and you put in a question mark and the word game with a capital G and we'll do equals. Um, apologies, you actually would need another uh, pin as well. So this one will be in the D pin and the C pin which should be just question mark listen playing as listen server okay so D will be the question mark game equals and then E will be the current mode path so let's go to our mode selector um, mode selection and we want to add the path to our data table we probably don't have that so let's go ahead and add that um, so we go into the data folder, game modes, and yep, so we want to add another thing to this. So let's go ahead and do that. Game modes, and we're going to add mode path. That's going to be a string. Okay, and the very first mode we're going to have in here is going to be deathmatch. Um, but for now, we're just going to use the default game mode that comes with us. We'll change this later on when we get to that. So we go to first person game mode here. Whoops. And we're going to right click, copy reference. And back in our um, game mode data table here, I'm going to deathmatch and we're going to add that to the mode path there. And again, you want to get rid of the everything after the, third, the last full stop. So it just ends with the game mode name. And we're also going to get rid of the apostrophe and word blueprint at the start there. Okay, so that's the path name of the game mode and you'll have all the game modes set up for this when you get around to it. So now we need to add that to our mode selection. So go to here, go to thing here and on the mode path here, we're gonna promote that to a variable of current mode path. Plug that in. Okay, so we've got the current mode path coming in. We're going to go back to our play screen and we're going to take out our mode selection. Oh, and we're going to get the current mode path and plug that into E. Okay, we're going to hit compile and save there and that should be all that is needed for this. So let's go back to our game, push play, post match. And we've got deathmatch and we're going to go to underworld and hit launch game. And it should take us to the map. There we go. We're good to go. So test that again with the other map. We go to launch, host match, and we're going to choose the other map for factory, do launch game. And it's going to load up. Just click the button once. I'm going to click it multiple times. So it just does it once. And there we go. We've launched into the game, ready to go. Okay, so there we go, we've got that working just fine. And there we have it, we can now travel to any map of our choosing through a simple selection tool. In the next and last episode of this series chapter, we're gonna go through the process of adding in the load screen as well as some images for our deathmatch, team deathmatch and king of the hill as well. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can catch all my videos early before anyone else. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time.